Welcome and thank you all for attending uh, Trail Talks tonight. I know this is a different circumstance. We're not having a, a live event, but we actually were able to connect with the speaker to submit a video. Um, I'm Ahmad Mirza, I'm a librarian here with the Santa Barbara Public Library. Uh, before we begin, I wanna send a big, 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 big thank you to James Wapitich, who is our library partner for uh, this Trail Talk series. And I just want to say a big thank you again, James, for all your help in coordinating these events with us. Uh, if anyone here is interested in uh, following James's adventures, you can check out his blog, uh, www.songsofthewilderness.com. Also, we're all in for a treat. Uh, our next Trail Talks is on the library calendar, and that's going to be on Thursday, March 17th. And that one is titled Waterfalls of, of the Santa Barbara and Ojai Mountains and Guess who's giving that talk, it's going to be James. So we're very lucky to have James do that talk for us. Also, how many of you knew we had waterfalls out here? Because I did not know, and I was looking forward to learning about that. Um, I want to introduce our speaker for this evening. Uh, it's going to be Executive Director uh, Brian Connaught, as he discusses the Sunset Valley road closure and trail updates and some alternative alternate backpacking trips that will help you get over the Nira Closure Blues. Um, and uh, just a little bit here, the, uh, founded in 1979, Los Padres Forest Association helps organize and manage volunteer trail work projects within Los Padres National Forest. In addition to being the executive director of LFPA, Brian is an avid backpacker, the author of the two backcountry trail maps covering the San Rafael and Dick Smith wilderness areas and has been actively involved in the development of the Condor Trail, a 420 mile uh, through hike route that traverses Los Padres National Forest. And with that bit, uh, enjoy the presentation from Brian. Really great presentation. Y'all are gonna love it and we will see you all soon. Thanks. Hi everyone, my name is Brian Conant. I work with the Los Padres Forest Association. Thanks so much for setting aside some time today or this evening and uh, and checking out our presentation today. So we've talking a little bit about Naira, the impacts it has with its current closure and some other alternate locations you could check out in the backcountry here in the, the Los Padres National Forest. So without further ado, this should take about 45 minutes or an hour. Um, get yourself something to drink and maybe a coffee. This might be a little uh, slow at times, uh, but uh, yeah, this should be a lot of fun and, um, and let's get started. So the title of this talk is No Naira, Now What? And uh, we're really gonna be discussing what's going on out at Naira these days and um, some alternate uh, locations that we can check out with, uh, with, with Naira being closed here for a little bit more. Um, hopefully many of you have been to Naira Campground. It's kind of the, the stepping off point, the launching spot for most of the Santa Barbara backcountry. And um, yeah, we're really gonna focus a lot on backpacking today day hiking and uh, more wilderness travel than, than anything else. So let's get started. All right, before we get into Naira, let's talk a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Brian Conan, as I mentioned. Uh, I've been backpacking, exploring the Los Padres for almost 30 years now. Um, I first came to Santa Barbara as a teenager and uh, really became um, enamored with the, with the Los Padres uh, based on this view. I drove over 154 one day with some friends on my way out to the Red Rock area, and um, I was blown away by by the backcountry, and, and really kind of caught Los Padres itis at that point in time, as I like to say, and uh, really spent a lot of my time, uh, most of my adult life since then, um, exploring the Los Padres, helping Los Padres, and and trying to do whatever I can to to be uh, engaged and involved. So uh, as a younger guy there, I think I was maybe 26 at the time, um, I set out to, to do some mapping of the Los Padres. Uh, I had a, a cartography and geography background from UCSB and um, was able to produce um, a handful of maps uh, based on the, the wilderness areas in the Santa Barbara and Ventura backcountry. So if you wanna check these out, if you haven't seen them before, uh, you can pick them up at REI or um, at my website, brianconet.com, or um, various other spots uh, within the area. Um, I'm still out exploring the forest, um, not quite as much as I once was, but um, my mission is quite a bit different. I'm not uh, seeking those hard to get place, get to places as quite as often as I once did. Now it's really um, 
taking my family out, my, my two kids and, and trying to uh, teach them some, some stuff about the Los Padres, how to enjoy uh, being outside. And uh, you know, the, the, the love of backcountry and the love of being in nature is, is uh, pretty important. So that's a lot of fun too. And some ways, um, most ways more, more exciting than uh, just wandering around like I did as a younger guy. Also uh, got very involved with the Condor Trail. I'm uh, on the, the board of the Condor Trail Association. Those of you who are not familiar with the Condor Trail, you may be familiar with these uh, three long distance trails, the big three that we have in the United States. We have the PCT, the Pacific Crest Trail, the Continental Divide Trail, and the Appalachian Trail. Um, the Condor Trail is sort of our version of a through trail here in the Los Padres. It's, it's about 420 miles long in its current iteration. Um, it covers most of the Los Padres from, from north to south and south to north. Um, by now, uh, 2022, we've had a few dozen people who have completed it. And um, right now, as, as I'm speaking here, um, there are two groups that are on the trail right now, at least two groups that we've been communicating with and trying to help them out on their way across, uh, across the, the, the Condor Trail. Um, and here's, here's kind of a more detailed route. You can go to condortrail.com and, and download um, a bunch of maps and KML files and different things like that to help with your journey. But um, it does cross through um, most, of, uh, most of the backcountry. Um, I think it hits seven of the 10 wilderness areas and, and uh, it's, a, it's a great trail. So if you're into through hiking, this might be something you wanna check out. Also real exciting this past year is uh, Brian Sarvis, who's here on the right on our right, um, he wrote a book called The Condor Trail Guide and it's available on Amazon. Um, he's in this photo with Mike Mackey who was also a Condor Trail through hiker. And um, this, this really is the Bible for the Condor Trail. So anything that you need to know from resupplies to, to current trail conditions, um, tips and places that you may wanna stash stuff along the way, pretty much anything about the Condor Trail um, is in this book. So if you haven't checked it out yet, check it out on amazon.com. and. And uh, we're really proud and, and excited of Brian Sarvis and his, uh, his efforts to make this uh, guidebook. So very cool. Um, as mentioned before, I'm also um, the executive director of the Los Padres Forest Association. I've been doing this now for six or seven years. Uh, the LPFA, as it's known, was uh, founded in 79. We are a, a nonprofit partner of the Los Padres National Forest. And really, if you boil it all down, we're, we're here to try to help out the forest however we can. We do a lot of trail work, we do educational events, we help the Forest Service installing signs, cleaning, graffiti removal. Um, we answer lots of emails about questions people are, are, are heading to the Los Padres and they want to know where to camp or what the condition of this trail is, or they just have general questions about water or fire, et cetera. We're, we're doing whatever we can to try to help people enjoy their, their time in the forest. Um, we also do a lot of volunteer work. Uh, mostly trail restoration. Um, we have roughly between 350 and 400 volunteers each year that come out and help us on the projects. We'll talk about that a little bit more later today. Um, we also have a, a trail crew and we're, we're really um, in the forest pretty much every day. I, I was kind of looking at the calendar and I think it's about 363 days that we're, we're doing something in the forest between the visitor centers and our volunteer and, and professional trail crew work. So we're out there, uh, we're helping out as much as we can. And um, if you'd like to help or sign up for our newsletter, feel free to email us at info at lpforest.org. We'll get you on the email list and we'd love to have you come out and volunteer at some point in time. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about no Naira, now what? Catchy, right? Hope we like it. All right, first thing we're gonna talk about is no Naira. Okay, so there's Naira. See that nice star there in the middle of the backcountry? It's really the, the stepping off point for most people when they venture into the Santa Barbara backcountry. Um, the road is paved to Naira. You know, it's 95%, 97% paved. And um, it's pretty easy access. And uh, you really, it's a great way to, to, to drive and, and kind of be right in the heart of it all real quickly. A lot of the other destinations around the Santa Barbara backcountry in particular, um, you either have to hike to get into the wilderness areas or drive a long way on some dirt roads or, or different you know, issues that, that about for providing access. But Naira is just a really nice, convenient jumping off point. It's got two beautiful trailheads at Naira on the Manzana Creek. 
Uh, the one on the left here is the upper manzana, and the one on the right is the lower manzana. We'll talk about that one in particular in a bit. But it's beautiful. If you've not hiked the manzana and, and kind of the trailheads out of Naira, uh, they are spectacular. They get a lot of use. We'll talk about that too. So generally, the, the trails are in pretty good shape. They get beaten down um, quite often, which is good. Um, there's some beautiful campsites along the way, some that uh, are on maps, some that aren't. Uh, lots of water. Generally, this time of year, you'll have nice water in there in, in that last, you know, till beginning, middle of summer, depending on the year. Maybe not this year, but uh, good water, good swimming holes along the way. Beautiful views. There's connections you can do. This is a, the junction of the Hurricane Deck Trail and the Lost Valley Trail. Uh, we're looking at maybe like 10 or 11 miles outside of Naira at this point in time. That's a Sisquak drainage in the background. The hurricane deck, the aforementioned hurricane deck, certainly a, a feature there based out of Naira. You're kind of looking right at the deck once you get on any of the trails out of Naira. It's a spectacular spot. And other features along the way. Um, this is on the lower Manzana, almost at the Sisquak Junction. So generally, this time of year, backpacking season, um, you know, early spring through late spring is the busiest time to be at Naira. And we get lots of people heading out there, Boy Scout troops, backpackers looking to do anything from an overnight to, you know, five to, to seven day backpacking loop trip out there. But this year, starting last summer, 20, summer of 2021, um, the road has been closed down to um, Naira and um, people are not permitted to, to go down the road. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but it's certainly uh, causing some issues as, as people don't, they're, they're familiar, they're used to going to Naira. And with this closure, they're not quite finding out, uh, finding the same locations that they usually like to go to. And the reason for that is these two Arizona crossings. So this is the one just below Davy Brown. Um, most of you have probably driven over this many, many times. Um, this is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like now. You can see it. Um, this, these are for fish passage. So the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, along with the Los Padres National Forest and South Coast Habitat Restoration have been working on these bridges in order to um, improve um, the fish passage along Davy Brown Creek and you know, ultimately Manzana and, and the Sisquak as well. So pretty amazing. These are um, current views. I think these were taken probably in early February, 2022, maybe late January. So this is what it looks like for those of us who haven't had the opportunity to go out there since uh, last summer. It's uh, pretty interesting to, to get a look at what these bridges will look like. This is the second Arizona crossing down by the lower Manzana trailhead. It's what it looked like before. I'm sure you're all again familiar with this view. And um, this is what it looks like now. So the parking area, this is the Manzana back there flowing from right to left. And this is the parking area that we've all parked at many times there. So pretty remarkable. Um, some of the landowners who live back there, I talked with them and they were a little skeptical ahead of time, but they've, they've said uh, they really like it and they appreciate these bridges. And, and I think this will be a, a nice feature there for the, for the Naira access for, uh, for many years to come. Um, so that's what's going on out there, and that's the reason why um, the road has been closed as long as it has. They've been busy pouring concrete and, and putting together these bridges. So um, as of right now, today is um, you know late February, mid to late February um, 2022. Um, it's still on target to be closed through March 31st. They are a little bit ahead of schedule, uh, but they still have some work to do out there, and they're, they're taking... Um, measurements on the quality of the of the concrete within the bridges and, and a variety of other things. So there's still some cleanup going on, but we're being told still that the road will be closed through uh, the end of March of this year. So uh, we should bank on that for the time being. A couple other photos here that uh, South Coast Habitat Rest Restoration sent to me. Um, they did have some game cameras out there and they caught this bear sneaking down for some water. Um, it looks like this was in September. And this is a mountain lion, almost looks Photoshopped. But uh, mountain lion going to the same the same site there. Actually, it looks like some graffiti up there too. We should go and help that out. All right. So um, as mentioned before, Naira is probably I, I would estimate that it's probably the third busiest trailhead in the forest. Um, certainly the most busy that doesn't have a hot spring 
um, or a front country trailhead associated with it. So as far as back country goes, it's probably the, the busiest that doesn't have a hot spring you can hike to. Um, this is a view of the lower, this is from Google Earth, lower um, Manzana trailhead. You can see all the cars parked there. Um, that's very common. Here's another view um, that I took one time. Um, you can see how many cars are piled up there. Um, you know, it's very popular, very popular destination for backpackers and, and equestrians and, and day hikers. All right, we're getting back to the no Naira. I think we've talked about why there is no Naira right now and kind of what the time frame is for Naira. Um, so now what, right? No Naira, now what? All right, so what I want to talk about are, I, I think I'm going to go over four different trails that uh, you may want to check out. Um, you know, we, we're all familiar with uh, Peter Blanca, um, Blue Canyon, you know, Upper Oso has its own issues. Um, there's different spots that are closed. Um, you know, the Great Valley and, and other areas that are closed right now due to snow and seasonal road closures. So I really want to try to focus on these four trails that you may want to check out, um, especially over the next month until Naira reopens. These might be good alternatives for you. Um, the first one here is called the Sulphur Spring Trail. And uh, that's this is the top of the Sulphur Spring as you start to drop down towards the Manzana. You can see the deck here. Actually, right down here was where that, um, that plane crash occurred a few months ago. If you haven't seen that, certainly Google Los Padres plane crash. You'll find a bunch of things about it. Um, so the launch off point for Sulphur Spring is at a saddle here called the Sado Saddle. This is out by Zaka Lake. And in order to get there, you head up towards Figueroa, take the catway out towards Sado Saddle. It's on a dirt road through some, some Forest Service gates. All the gates are open at the moment. We'll go into that in a little bit as well. And you can see it's not too far from Naira. Um, this is actually a, a nice kind of, you know, less known way to get to the lower Manzana. Um, you park at Sato Saddle and drop down the Sulphur Spring Trail into the lower Manzana drainage. So uh, another, another picture here, the, the trail does drop down, um, crosses a private road a few different times, and then, you know, you, you drop down onto the Manzana, um, which is on the road section of the Manzana Trail um, just above uh, the cabins and, and, and in between the private in holdings. So it's really a pretty trail, very steep. I think it's like 2,200 feet of drop in um, of descent there in two point something miles under three miles. So it's, it's fairly, it's, it's maybe as steep as it gets here in the Los Padres. So uh, certainly take that into consideration if you're planning on hiking this. Um, uh, over the last 10, 15 years, uh, the Sulphur Spring Trail has really been known for being overgrown, uh, lots of poison oak, big ruts, you know, not, not somewhere where that you'd really want to go hike, uh, a lot of bushwhacking and pushing through things. Um, that's not the case anymore. We've been working on this trail, uh, the trail crew and our volunteer efforts. Uh, we've been trying to, to open up this trail for really the past year and a half, two years, and we just finished it uh, within the last month or so. Here's a before and after. Uh, showing some of our trail crew uh, clearing this, this tree that came down on the trail. Uh, but top to bottom, it should be as good as it's been in a long, long time right now. And other than the steepness, it's, it's ready to go. But um, yeah, it, like I said, we had uh, our trail crew out there. We also had some locals come out, volunteer to help. Uh, this local showed up and, and ran the hedger there for a little bit. Uh, this is non-wilderness, um, dropping in here from Sato Saddle down to the Manzana. And uh, yeah, this local uh, pitched in a bit and uh, helped out how, however he could, but uh, it's all cleared in good shape now. Once you get down to uh, the Manzana, there's the, the usual beautiful spots that you can go. Uh, the schoolhouse here and, and another camp there on the left-hand side. Um, right now with Naira being closed, I was down there a couple of weeks ago and, and I did not see a footprint. It was, it was pretty remarkable. Uh, there were some motorcycle tracks going up, up the trail a little bit, but no footprints. Um, so it's really nice to, to enjoy this area without a ton of people around. Um, there's some spectacular views as usual. This is on the lower Manzana as well. And um, lots of other loops you can do, bigger loop opportunities and trips. A lot of people like to do the lower Sisquak loop, which is, you know, traditionally you start at Naira and you loop around to the schoolhouse, up the Sisquak to South Fork, and then loop back around through Manzana Narrows. Um, you can do that starting from Sato Saddle. It's going to tack on a little bit of miles and certainly a steep climb at the end, um, but that's certainly a, a route you could tie in. 
Um, also coming down from, from Seder Saddle, you could do Petrero um, or Hurricane Deck to Petrero or up, up to Petrero and down Hurricane Deck, um, looping in the, the schoolhouse. There's lots of different options you could do here. But again, it's just kind of a, a different alternate path, a different route to get into the Manzana. Um, it's not quite as, um, doesn't take quite as long as coming up from Kachuma Saddle and, and dropping down to Big Cone Spruce. You're, you're down there pretty fast and actually the mileage to the, to the schoolhouse is quicker coming in from Sulphur Spring than it would be uh, coming in from Naira. So I've um, done kind of like a, a quick rating system for these trails and um, on these five criteria here, accessibility. Um, right now, the, the, the road is open to Sulphur Spring. You do need, um, I would say a, a high clearance car. Uh, you do not need four wheel drive, but uh, some sort of a, a high clearance vehicle, an SUV, maybe even a minivan would make it. I don't know if you'd want to take a normal passenger vehicle. Um, if it rains, they do close the road. Um, it does actually get quite a bit of damage. Um, it's pretty mucky and muddy out there. Um, so that's why I didn't really rate accessibility super high. Uh, but right now with this dry winter we've been having, um, it's a pretty easy drive to get out there to, to Cedro Saddle. Uh, difficulty in trail conditions. Um, it is quite difficult. Uh, that, that climb up is, is a bear. It's a beast for sure when you're coming up from the Manzana back to Cedro. So you certainly want to try to time it with some, with some shade or cloud cover or, or a cooler day. Um, and the trail conditions are great. You know, the Sulphur Springs has been worked on, like I said, and once you get to the Manzana, it's, it's the Manzana. Shouldn't have any problems with the uh, trail conditions, at least, at least on the basic trails when you get down there. Uh, wildness factor didn't score super high, um, even though we did see the bear on that one photo. Uh, there are some inholdings out there and, and you're probably gonna see some people uh, once you get down in there. So it's not super wild, but um, you know, certainly um, wild enough. And then connectivity and loop options, we talked about that. Uh, you can loop in with the lower Sisquak, um, lots of different options there to, to explore. You also could tie in with the condor trail and head, up, head down the Sisquak or up the Sisquak and, um, and jump in with the condor trail as well. And overall rating, of course, it's five stars. Um, Sulphur Spring is beautiful and that part of the forest is uh, spectacular. All right, next trail, Santa Barbara Canyon. Um, this is in the Dick Smith Wilderness, beautiful trail. Uh, let's talk about this a little bit here. So Santa Barbara Canyon Trailhead is accessed. Uh, most people, really, I, I always say it's two, two hours from everywhere. No matter where you're at, it's about two hours to get there. Uh, but you can come over 33 or 166 to Kuyama side and then up to Santa Barbara Canyon Trailhead. And from there, it's about seven miles up to Medulce Camp. And as you can see, you're really accessing. It's the main access point for a lot of the the San Rafael, the Upper Siswak, and, uh, and, and Dick Smith area. But what we've seen over the last, you know, meh, five, six, seven years is that the Forest Service has been closing the gate from December 1st through May 1st there at the Reyes Ranch. And um, we talked to them. We actually had a really good positive experience with the Forest Service. We told them, we said, hey, look, Naira's closed this year. It's it's um, that's going to displace a lot of backpackers. A lot of people that are used to going to Naira need somewhere else to go. Can we leave some of the gates open? And so this is the one that we really wanted them to leave open, and they have. So this gate is open at the moment. There's a few things we have to do for them um, in order to make sure it stays open. But um, the gate to San Barbara Canyon is open right now, and um, and definitely get out there and and, and enjoy it while you can. Um, with the gate open, you drive right here to Santa Barbara Canyon Trailhead. Um, it's hard to miss. And you get started. It's about seven miles up the canyon towards Medulce Campground. And um, if you haven't hiked this trail, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's one of the best. And um, I mean, right from your car, you're, you're in the wilderness and, and hiking up this uh, beautiful canyon that changes quite a bit along the way. You kind of start out in the desert and you start to get into some more trees and oaks and and, and pines and conifers until eventually you get up to Medulce camp. So the reason I'm not live with you guys today, if you're listening to this at the library on Thursday the 17th, um, I am out on Santa Barbara Canyon right now um, when you're listening to this on Heartbreak Hill. So uh, looking at this elevation profile here, you see it's pretty gradual as you climb up and then right about at the six mile mark, it just hits this, this super steep climb. This is what is called the Heartbreak Hill. And you know, most trails you want them to be backcountry trails, 10, 15, maybe 18% at the most. Um, the grade on this in some places like where this picture is taken 
is uh, getting close to 40, 45%. And it's, it's over the years, these giant ruts have developed tons of erosion damage, not very much fun to hike. If you're having to be here in the snow or, or after rain, it's like two steps forward, one step back. It's horrible. And so we're, we, we've received a grant from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation with support from the Forest Service. And we're gonna be building a reroute up Heartbreak Hill that's gonna bypass this giant rut. And so this pink line, um, I was out there last week uh, crawling around. That's the pink line that we crawled around at last week. And then this week, uh, we're going in to start laying the flagging and, and start uh, preparing the P line for the preliminary line for, for where the trail is going to be. So really exciting. Um, Heartbreak Hill is in okay shape right now. You certainly can get up it without a whole lot of, of, of pushing through brush, but uh, it is a steep beast there. It, that uh, It's kind of a tough part there on, the, on, the, on your way up to the Medulce camp. Uh, once you get to the top and crest over, uh, Mendoza Camp's kind of riding the pine trees on both these pictures. Uh, it does get a lot of snow in the wintertime. In the spring, it's beautiful, big grassy petreros. Um, it is a beautiful spot. If you haven't been, certainly try to get out there at some point in time. The views in the canyon there, it's along a creek called Pine Creek. Absolutely spectacular. Um, there's two main campsites in there. This is the Backpacker Camp, which is located a little bit further up the canyon. And the other main camp is where the old uh, Medulce cabin used to be. And here's a picture of the, of the cabin, what, where it used to be and, and where, what it looks like now. Um, it's not usually this busy. This was taken during working vacation, but uh, gives you an idea of, of, uh, of what it once looked like and kind of what it looks like now. It's a really spectacular spot. So uh, one of the best things about Santa Barbara Canyon, you can go up to Medulce and back in a day. I've, I've done that and lots of people do. Sorry, not a day. I have done it in a day, but you can do it in a, week, in a quick weekend up to Medulce, seven miles, spend the night, come back down on a Sunday. Uh, a lot of people also spend a, an extra lay day there and go climb Medulce Peak. Um, but what I really like to encourage people to do is take three to five, maybe six days if you can, and do this loop where you come up Santa Barbara Canyon across to Alamar Saddle, into the San Rafael, down the upper Sisquoc, back Judell Canyon, and then come back the road, um, Santa Barbara Canyon Road, back to your car at the Santa Barbara Trailhead, Santa Barbara Canyon Trailhead. So this is a beautiful, beautiful loop. It's approximately, I think it's 27, 30 miles, something like that. Um, the trails are all in pretty good shape at the moment, uh, but it's absolutely spectacular. You get to really see some of the best of the best, um, the high country, some, some meadows, um, it's really, really spectacular. Lots of waterfalls, other places you should, you should explore while you're out there. Uh, Big Pine Mountain, you can get up to that, Medulce Peak, West Big Pine. Um, certainly, if you can stretch this out into four or five days, please do. Um, this is Medulce Peak back here in the background and um, at the top of Medulce Trail where it hits the um, uh, Buckhorn Road is actually, and you leave the Dick Smith Wilderness and then drop down into the Sisquoc. This is a view looking down the Sisquoc uh, from near the Devil's Slide. And then um, Heath Camp is down there a little bit and you have to climb up Judell Trail, which is beautiful as well. We've had a lot of, done a lot of work on these, these trails over the last five, 10 years. And then uh, the trail finally uh, tops out at uh, Santa Barbara Potrero. And from there, you take the road back down um, to the gate and just maybe a half a mile beyond this is where your car would be parked at Santa Barbara Canyon Trailhead. So it's, it's a great loop. Um, highly recommend it if you can, if you can fit it in this, uh, this summer or this uh, spring, please do so. All right, Santa Barbara Canyon Trail accessibility. Um, right now it is open. Uh, traditionally, like I said, over the last five, six years, the Forest Service has closed it. We're certainly hoping to work with them to change that because um, uh, December to May, when it's closed, that's the best time to be out there. So um, I gave it three, three hikers for that. Uh, difficulty and trail conditions. Uh, the, the, the trails are really good out there by, by Los Padres backcountry standards. Um, LPFA, we've been doing a lot of work on all of those trails and it should be pretty good at the moment. Um, maybe a few down trees here and there, but um, nothing, nothing too difficult to get through. As far as difficulty goes, you do have Heartbreak Hill, you have some climbs. Uh, Judell can be a little challenging climbing out of there. Uh, so there's a little bit of difficulty just in, uh, in, in, the, in how strenuous the hiking is, but um, overall uh, trail conditions are, are really good out there. Uh, wildness factor, absolutely. This is, you're gonna see lots of bear activity, bear tracks, 
Uh, you probably won't see a whole lot of people. Hopefully we don't change that with this presentation, but um, it's a great, great wild area to, to explore for sure. And then connectivity, it's hard to beat. Um, there's certainly a lot of loops you can do here. Uh, we talked about the one three to five day loop. You could do something bigger and head out to Mission Pine and, and drop down uh, Big Cone Spruce to the Manzana to South Fork. Uh, you could incorporate the Sweetwater Trail or Jackson Trail and, and explore the Sierra Madre. There's lots of different options um, out there uh, if you start from Santa Barbara Canyon. So check it out. Okay, next up, we are now going a little south to the Lion Canyon, Red Reef, and Sespe River Trails. This is in the Sespe Wilderness of Ventura County, Ojai Backcountry area. Um, so if you haven't been here before, it is accessed predominantly, mainly from the Peter Blanca Trailhead. Um, but rather than just going down, um, you know, down the, the Sespe or up towards Pine Mountain Lodge, we're really looking at maybe doing a, a different sort of loop that some of you might not have explored before, uh, where you're going up Lion Canyon or down Lion Canyon, I guess. Um, I think we're going to look at it from going counterclockwise. But we'll say going up Lion Canyon, across Nordoff, down um, Red Reef Trail, back to the Sespe, and then back to Peter Blanca that way. So, um, yeah, really cool loop. If, if you haven't done it before, check it out. So our journey starts at uh, the Lion Canyon Trail. And from there, you're heading up Lion Canyon, very pretty, picturesque spot. Uh, eventually, summits up on the Nordoff Ridge Road. Um, this is Elder Camp. This is a, a spot you may want to camp along the way. You can see the ocean views, the Channel Islands in the, in the background there on the left. Um, there's no water here, so if you are planning on, on staying at Elder Camp, you may want to you know, make sure that you have enough water um, for, for, uh, for your journey. Uh, I think the, the closest water below that is probably uh, coming from Lion Canyon, maybe the junction for, for West and East Lion, and then your next water is going to be at, um, at Ladybug Camp. So you, you do have a little um, you know, seven, 10 mile stretch there where, where you don't have access to water. Uh, once you drop down into Red Reef Canyon, you get some really spectacular views on your way down to, to Ladybug. And um, it, that's really what, what I kind of want to focus on here today. Um, we've been doing a whole lot of work on the Red Reef Trail, partnering with the Forest Service um, and some other volunteer groups like um, well, we're not going to go into all the different volunteer groups now, but certainly the, the Runners for Public Lands have been a huge help on this as well. But um, yeah, we've been chipping away at this really for the past year and a half, just for COVID. We we're, were working on this and then it got derailed during COVID. Um, but you can see the, the, the trail coming down from Topa Topa Hines Peak, get down to Ladybug Camp. Um, that's all been worked. We actually worked on that last week. Um, again, thanks to Runners for Public Land for helping us pull some of the water out there. Uh, but the trail crew was out there working from the Hind Peach, Peach Peak section down towards Ladybug Camp. Uh, we've also been working from the Sespe up, um, and we have all of that section here uh, brushed out and, and cleared as well. So the only remaining section is in this box here, and it's about two and a half miles. Um, so if you're okay with, with brushing, you only got about two and a half miles, and it, it's going to be pretty bad. It's pretty thick in there, but... Um, uh, if, you, if you were out here, you know, three months ago, you would have had six, seven miles of, of really severe brushing, and um, we're getting there. And I'll go over some plans um, for, for finishing up that last two and a half miles here in a little bit. But uh, yeah, check it out. Red Reef Trail is super nice. Uh, it's one of, it's probably my favorite trail in the backcountry anywhere. It's really designed uh, well and interesting. It goes out of its way to, to hit some of the, the more scenic spots and some really neat, interesting features along, along the trail. It's, it's great. And views are great. This is uh, the Topa Topas looking back up towards Ladybug. This is from the lower part, um, really nice. And then as you get down into the, the Sespe, um, you know, you got the Sespe, which that, that says it all. It's really spectacular down there as well. And then uh, once we, we connect with the Sespe, we're, we're heading back up upstream towards Peter Blanca and in and out of the, the Sespe wilderness and, and back to our, our cars at Peter Blanca. So Again, um, I don't remember the mileage offhand. I'm, I'm going to guess somewhere around 30 miles. Um, probably some of you could do it in a day. Um, some might think two days. Um, I would I would really encourage you know three to five. Um, you know you may want to go clockwise and and try to camp maybe at Oak Flat or um, you know Willet and then come up camp at Ladybug and then maybe you know make a big push from Ladybug to Peter Blanca. Um, last time I did this, I went from Peter Blanca to Ladybug in a day. Um, 
But uh, yeah, you know, take a look at the mileage. Just know there's no water between really the, the two lion camps and, and Ladybug. Um, but you know, as long as you're out there, you also could could head downstream to Willet or Sespe. And then there's also other loop options too. You can head up the Johnston Ridge Trail to Muta and, and come back down Peter Blanca. Uh, lots of different places to check out, but uh, this is a really good, you know, three, two, three, four day um, trip for sure. All right, our rating system, accessibility, great. Um, I would think that Peter Blanca Trailhead is open just about every day of the year. Uh, only time that it's probably closed is if there is some snow on Highway 33 or, or you know, maybe a rock slide or something like that. But it's paved all the way to the trailhead and, um, you know, more or less paved. There are some potholes. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's great. Accessibility is, is certainly uh, easy to get out there. Uh, difficulty, trails are in pretty good shape. I talked to you, uh, you know, Sespe is always in good shape. Lion Canyon is in good shape at the moment. There's that two and a half mile section. Um, there is some difficulty, you know, climbing up Lion Canyon and then also coming up or down Red Reef is difficult. There's a lot of elevation change. Um, so be aware of that. Uh, wildness factor, you're certainly getting out there a bit, but you know, you do have cell reception in the middle of the hike when you get up to Nordoff and Anytime you're on the CESP, chances are you're going to see quite a few people, um, especially coming out of Peter Blanca. So, you know, it's got some wildness factor, but it's not uh, off the charts by any means. Uh, connectivity, we talked about that. Lots of different ways to, uh, different places to explore and, and, and check out out there. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's great. Overall rating, five, five hikers for sure. It's, it's, it's terrific. Um, check it out. All right, the last one, we're still in the Sespe. Now we're a little bit further south. We're down at the Agua Blanca Trail, Pothole Trail. Um, if you haven't been down there, the big news in this part of the forest is a brand new trailhead at the Pothole Trail. It's called the Pothole Trailhead, imagine that. Um, this is down by Piru. Almost, uh, you can see we're right on the edge of Ventura County and Los Angeles County line. So Ventura County, um, almost out of Santa Clarita. And you go up towards Lake Piru, uh, they, there's a little kiosk there. You don't have to pay. You tell them that you're going to the trailhead and they'll let you through. And you get to drive in all the way to the new trailhead. Um, over the last 20 years or so that I've hiked this trail, um, you've had to stop a lot of different places. That was a gate for a while. This was a gate. Uh, you know, Juan Fernandez was a gate at one point in time. Um, but now you can drive all the way into this trailhead, which is right at the base of the pothole trail. And it's, it's really convenient for, for hiking the, these trails now. I think this is going to open up a lot more loop opportunities and different backpacking options for, for people outside of, um, for hikers out in the Piru area. This is the new um, Pothole Trailhead looking nice, right? It's looking great. And a um, little blurry Google Earth photo. So the Pothole Trailhead is over there. This is also the terminus or the starting point for the Condor Trail. Pretty exciting as well. Uh, the Condor Trail would take you up the Pothole Trail and, and out to towards Cove Camp, Log Cabin and Cove. Uh, but I kind of recommend if people are going out here, the pothole is pretty steep. You probably want to start by taking this dash white line, which is the road, and take the road to the end here, jump on the Agua Blanca Trail, and you can either camp at Log Cabin um, or continue up to Cove. And, and this is what's really nice about the new trailhead is it's, it used to be really a long hike to get up to Cove. Now you, you can do it in a weekend, Cove and back um, fairly easily. You know, it's, 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 it's great. Um, and what most people do too is they'll, like I said, either stay at Log Cabin or Cove and then they'll come back, they'll, they'll complete the loop by taking the pothole trail back to the trailhead. So again, a really nice loop. You can do an out and back, but um, incorporating a loop here is, is probably the way to go. Um, so it's probably the only turnstile. Start by going through the turnstile, only turnstile, maybe in the whole forest. It's, uh, it's pretty uh, different, it's unique for sure. And into the Sespe Wilderness, heading up the Agua Blanca through the Devil's Gateway. This is really a, a neat feature as well. And then you get to the junction of Log Cabin and Cove. Uh, really neat thing about Agua Blanca is these are called um, blazes. And you see these on some of the more the older, more mature trails that maybe haven't burned. A lot of the trees there will have these blazes. They kind of look like apes or or snowmen, or maybe something you see in a Star Wars movie. Um, but there's a ton of them on Agua Blanca. I'm not sure why, but there's a uh, there's more on Agua Blanca, I think, um, per tree than, than anywhere else. Um, this is Cove Camp, again, a place I like to camp. Um, the trail above here gets, gets pretty rough. It's, it's a little rough getting to Cove as well. But, um, you know, beyond this, you're really more of just walking in the creek than, than trying to follow a trail. And then if we were to loop back, uh, this is the pothole and the 
uh, Devil's Potrero on your way back along the Pothole Trail. Uh, some great views looking up towards the Condor Sanctuary and into the Sespe. And then as you, you know, start to descend towards the new trailhead, which is down there, um, you get some nice views of the Angeles Mountains and, and uh, down towards Lake, Lake Piru. So it's, it's really scenic. Um, the, whole, the whole loop, everything out there is really beautiful. Um, it's a little different than the rest of the trails we talked about, but, but quite nice. So certainly check this out. Um, yeah, the new trailhead it really has kind of opened up, uh, opened up a whole new uh, world of opportunities out there for, uh, for weekend hikers. So it's great. All right, accessibility, we're getting at four. Um, it is mostly paved to the trailhead, maybe 100% paved, uh, but I don't know enough. This trailhead just opened up in December of 2020, and uh, we haven't quite seen how often they close that road during storms or rock slides. So I can give it five hikers, but it should be, it should be open for you, um, certainly way more frequently than it's closed. Uh, difficulty in trail conditions, you are going to have, this is the Agua Blanca, it's pretty rough back there. And uh, you are going to have some some rough uh, trail conditions, both on the, the pothole, on the, the wilderness side of the pothole trail, as well as um, once you in particular get above log cabins camp. Uh, difficulty for sure, um, climbing up the pothole trail is very steep. It's kind of like a, a little bit longer version, a, a mile and a half version of the Heartbreak Hill. Uh, you get a lot of uh, 30 to 40 uh, percent grade slopes going up that trail. And uh, same thing if you're coming up from log cabin on the pothole trail, it's pretty steep. Uh, wild factor, uh, there are some homes back there, um, but you're going to see a lot of bear tracks, a lot of bear signs. It's it's very wild. It's beautiful out there for sure. And we talked about the connectivity. You could do some, I'm going to call it Chris Lordian um, mega uh, loop options from there. But most of the loops are, are that you're going to do are just the ones that I've talked about, uh, incorporating Agua Blanca in the pothole. Um, you could jump on the Condor Trail. And, um, you know, like I said, you, you can certainly go big and head up to some places like uh, Cobblestone or Halfway Spring, Bracho, places like that. Overall rating five stars, of course. All right, honorable mention, a couple of things. Uh, Trout Creek Trail in the Garcia Wilderness, that's in San Luis, certainly a cool spot. The old Ranch in Nuevo on the Dick Smith, um, another spot that, that probably doesn't see a whole lot of use, but it's just a little bit further than Piedra Blanca and Matillaha, certainly worth checking out. And, you know, what I really encourage people to do is, um, you know, if you've been hiking out at uh, Naira or Peter Blanco or some of the other popular trailheads, um, salmon up in up in the Silver Peak Wilderness, you know, tr try looking at a different spot. Grab a map, pick up pick up a map at your local store or online. Um, look at some different trailheads and and just go check them out. Um, you you certainly can go to hikelospadres.com and and learn a little bit more about the trails there. Um, or feel free to email us info at lpforest.org. We'll answer your questions as quickly as we can. I'm trying to get water conditions, trail conditions, anything like that. And please, after you come back, if you've gone and explored a new trail, a new campsite, um, get onto High Close Padres and you can do it anonymous. It's, you know, we're not asking for email addresses or anything like that. Uh, you can get on there and just kind of tell us what you found and, and you might help out another hiker down the road. So it's certainly a great tool to use. Um, High Close Padres, uh, fantastic. All right. So now is my sales pitch, uh, working vacations. It takes a village. So putting on my LPFA hat here. One second, let me put on the hat. Okay, hats on. Um, it takes a village. Our working vacations are um, really the, I think they're the best thing that we do, the best thing that that um, happens across the forest, and they're a lot of fun. If you guys have been on working vacations, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then um, please join us down the road. So here's kind of a view. I said it takes a village. This is Medulce Camp during one of our working vacations um, pre-COVID. And you can see we have a, a kitchen set up there. Um, you, people are scattered around with their tents. You know, the horses and the mules are lined up ready to do their thing. And uh, it's, it's quite, a, um, quite a process uh, pulling off the working vacations. There's lots of moving parts and, and a lot of um, people helping out along the way. And we get a lot of great work done. Each working vacation, we generally get about 1,000 hours of volunteer time and um, and uh, you know miles of trail work that, that are done and, and lots of smiles and laughter and, and good times hanging out in the forest with uh, like-minded like people and, and friends. Um, but we're always looking for help. Um, this is again my sales pitch. Trail workers, yes, absolutely. Volunteers coming out to, to swing a tool, uh, use a lopper, help with the crosscut saw. Always looking for, for people to come out and help. Um, the working vacations are usually seven to 10 days long. Um, we usually have packers bring in all the supplies. What we like to do is have it so that volunteers just have to carry their backpack 
with just their their personal items, sleeping bag, tent, clothes, things like that. We'll bring in all the food. Um, we'll bring in some some beverages. And um, ideally, we have a cook out there that can help as well and, and takes care of all the cooking for the meals and things like that. We try to make it as easy as possible for everybody so that, um, you know, you can spend as much time as you, as, as, as you can um, helping out on the trails. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And we're not asking for people to come for all seven to 10 days. That'd be great if you could. But, you know, life happens. And, and if we could get two to three, four days out of you, that's great, too. So uh, trail workers, awesome. We're always looking for people. Cooks, they, they're the most important person on this whole project. If you like to cook for people, you like to cook in a backcountry setting, um, please sign up and, and volunteer to help us with cooking. Um, even if you're able to cook for just three, four days at a time, that would really help on our working vacation. Um, packers, we have some of the best volunteers, um, some legends that help us pack with their mules and horses and goats too. Uh, but if you have animals and, and you're interested in, in, in doing some pack support here in the Los Padres, uh, we'd love to partner up and, and and, uh, and have you help support one of the working vacations. Um, drivers as well, some of our projects do require uh, four-wheel drive access and not everyone has four-wheel drive. So we're always kind of looking for people that may want to help out and, uh, and help shuttle people up, up the trail or up the road, um, let us know. Sometimes we even need camp sitters, uh, just show up, read a book and, and help make sure that the bears don't attack our food stash. That help, hap, happens sometimes. Uh, general support, hey, if you want to help, we'll find, we'll find somewhere for you to help out with on these working vacations. And um, yeah, did we say cooks? Cooks are the most important. So if you like to cook, let us know, please. And it all helps. Um, you know, it, they're so much fun. The working vacations are great. And uh, we have a bunch of them scheduled for this year. Um, sales pitch, that's what I'm going to be talking about next. So our first working vacation is on the Alder Creek Trail at Cow Springs. Cow Spring is down here where these uh, cottonwoods are. Um, this is along the Condor Trail. Uh, just out of Fillmore, about uh, I think it's it's about three and a half miles, uh, maybe four miles from Doe Flat Trailhead. So pretty easy to get there. Uh, we're hoping to have pack support and uh, and a cook set up, and and we'll set up a nice uh, village there underneath these trees at Cow Springs. And and the the, the work's gonna be focused on brushing the trail from Cow Springs down towards Alder. And um, I was out there a couple months ago doing some surveying, and there's a lot of brush, a lot, lots that need to get done out there. So we love as much help. If, you, if any of you are in Ventura County or, or this is your stomping ground, you'd like to help out, um, please come out and volunteer. We're really hoping to brush out the trail all the way down to Alder Creek Camp would be, uh, would be fantastic. Uh, March 23rd, April 3rd. We need, sorry, March 26th through April 3rd. We need some, some rain, that's for sure. Next one is the Red Reef Trail in the Sespe Wilderness. We talked about this um, earlier, that box. Remember I showed that box of, of, of where the trail work hasn't been done? That box really starts here at this little cluster of, of, of um, conifers here. This is where Ladybug Camp is. What a beautiful spot, right? That's going to be our home. That's going to be our village there for, for 10 days in April. We have stock support already lined up for this, but we're looking for drivers. We're looking for volunteers. A cook would be fantastic. Uh, but we're going to have about a four mile hike from um, Elder Camp, which is where we're going to drive and, and park the vehicles, four mile hike into Ladybug. And from there, our work is going to be down towards the Sespe, um, taking care of some of the really heavy brush. And you can kind of see the trail here on the right. There's uh, some really famous crib walls that were built by the Ojai crew a few years ago, and uh, they haven't been maintained much lately. So we're going to go out there and, and uh, you know, uh, push some rocks off the side and use our McLeods and, and uh, on top of that, do a lot of brushing here in this uh, chemise zone um, as you drop down to the Sespe. So um, come on out, you know, we'd love you for all 10 days, but uh, if, if you can only make it for three or four, that'd be great too. And uh, yeah, keep looking at this little cluster of pines and just think that would be so cool to be there for, for a week or so, right? Yeah, come sign up. All right, our last one for the year, again, we're gonna need more rain, fingers crossed, is the Indian Creek Trail. This is behind Santa Barbara in the Dick Smith Wilderness, uh, one of the most magical trails out there. It really hasn't been maintained since the 07 Zaka fire. Uh, we worked the trail, the Buckhorn Trail to Meadow Camp is cleared, and we'll, we'll hit that again before the, the working vacation. Um, but we're really going to focus on this working vacation from Meadow Camp up the three or four miles up to um, Indian Creek Camp, Indian Canyon Public Camp, whatever it's called. Um, so there'll be a lot of brushing tread work and crosscut work on this on this project, a lot of crosscut work. So if you're interested in any of those things, come on out. 
uh, kind of a different thing about this project. We'll be able to drive past Pendola. Uh, we'll get access from the Forest Service to drive to the Mono Gate. And from there, it's non-wilderness up to Meadow Camp. So we could hike in, you could ride your horse in, you could ride your bike in. And then the, the, the um, wilderness area picks up right there at Meadow Camp. And from there on, we'll be using hand tools up towards uh, any creek camp. Uh, this will be great. We've been wanting to do this project for years now. And um, really hoping we get some more rain um, and we can pull this off in uh, you know mid mid May. So looking forward to that. Okay, I think that's it. Um, I'm not sure how long this has taken so far, but hopefully you guys drink some coffee and stuck with me. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, info at lpforest.org. I'm hoping to be part of the Q and A session here after this talk. Uh, we'll see about that. And then, um, you know, if you don't use Hike Los Padres, you want to go explore the backcountry um, for sure. Um, you know, go go check out Hike Los Padres. I'm trying to get my face up here. Yeah, there I am. Hopefully, you guys can see me. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys so much. And um, yeah, um, again, hope you uh, had a good time and you got something from this. And we'll see you down the road. Okay, bye.